degrees and if this is the intensity and this is wavelength you get this kind of a graph something like this and this is k alpha line it will be slightly like this this is k beta this is continuous spectra x-ray and this is characteristics this is dependent on the material used now let us talk about k alpha line because this is Mose, Moseley's law is about that when an electron which is striking the target when it is retarded the energy of the electron gets converted to photon this is the photon this was energy of electron suppose full energy is given to photon you had continuous spectra this is this and you calculate the lambda from there I'm not going to that now when you have a different kind of x-ray this was continuous now I'm coming to this characteristic when electron strikes off one of the incoming electron strikes off this electron in the K shell and a vacancy is created but this vacancy is filled by the electron from the L shell and you have K alpha lines Mosile studies the studied these K alpha lines for different materials and during that time the materials were arranged in periodic table on the basis of atomic weight and they were having in some series they were arranged and this series was based on atomic weight so those materials were examined by Mosile and a graph was plotted for the square root of the frequency and the sequence of the elements what was found was that you get a graph which is a straight line and this was not passing through this there was an offset here so it point to be noted here is this graph does not pass through the origin there is an offset we'll come to that and this is for k alpha line so when the atoms are being seen, when the met elements are being seen in the ascending order it was seen that the frequency is also going following a fixed pattern so it was interpreted that there must be some property of the element which makes this kind of behavior for the frequency of k alpha line and that property later on was understood as the atomic number in fact earlier the nickel was arranged before cobalt and cobalt was arranged after nickel based on atomic weight but based on this study this arrangement was changed and cobalt came here and nickel came here nickel was giving the higher frequency so based on this study Mosele predicted this kind of an equation mu is a z minus b where z is the atomic number now let us just correlate this interesting relationship with our Bohr model for the hydrogen atom based on that we had arrived at 1 upon lambda is r 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square so if the electron is jumping from second to one that is l to m you are having k alpha line so i write it like this r 1 minus 1 upon 4 you write i write 1 upon lambda is equal to r 3 upon 4 i multiplied by c it becomes frequency mu just recall in the Bohr model 
we had kept z as one but it is z square here if we take hydrogen like atom hydrogen like ionized atom with only one electron but then the z will not be equal to one z is one in case of hydrogen because hydrogen has one atomic number if you take some other atom ionize it have one electron in the outer in the orbit of k but the z is not one z is that property of the material so z square is taken when you are talking about other materials actually in this this equation is derived on the basis of the energy we know of the hydrogen atom we arrive at m z square e raised to power 4 upon 8 e 0 n square h square is equal to h mu and from there we arrived at the lambda c upon lambda and you took h c here so it became h cube c 1 upon lambda and this was equal to r this was equal to r which is 1.097 and now just i was just explaining that now coming back to this relationship i get mu is equal to here there is z square mu is equal to z square r c 3 upon 4 and now another thing you have to take into account when an electron is jumping is coming down from the L shell to M shell you have to take into account the screening effect this is the nucleus now from L shell this electron is coming here to fill the gap and we have k alpha line but when you show the energy levels as I've shown in the other diagram k is taken at the top L M when the electron is removed from k shell k is at the top because it has it has the highest energy is required to take out the electron from the k shell that is why we when we draw k alpha k beta k lambda lines we take energy zero here and k has the highest energy that i have covered in a separate lecture so you can see that so but in the diagram when we show this is the uh, when we show in the shells this is k this is l shell we show it like this and here we will show it like this k alpha line in energy diagram you can see that for detail but that is not much relevant here now when the electron is coming from l shell to k shell k shell had two electrons initially one elect vacancy was created because this electron was ejected or struck out when the x-rays were that is how x-ray was generated now this electron incoming electron from l shell when it sees towards the nucleus it encounters the charge z minus one due to this electron so the charge encountered if you look at the if you take the gauss law the charge enclosed by this surface is not z the positive charge is not z which is part of this this shows the positive charge but it has to be modified to take into account another electron that is called the screening effect so z minus 1 you have to take so mu becomes z minus 1 whole square 3 rc upon 4 now let me write it here now this equation if i take square root it becomes square mu is equal to root 3 rc upon 4 into z minus 1 and this is your a and this is your b here b is equal to 1 for k alpha line and a value you can calculate by this it is about 4.98 into 10 to power 7 is the value of a so this is how this graph plotted by Mosley is related to the atomic uh, structure taken by Bohr and the energy equation so these things are interrelated but mostly law is relevant only as far as this equation is concerned and because of this minus b minus 1 as I showed you the line is not passing through the origin but it is passing at an offset